Sometimes it's exactly what makes you cry, exactly what makes you confront yourself and what is super uncomfortable. Exactly these moments sometimes are the ones you should be thankful for because they carry the potential to unlock something very fundamental inside of you. Here is the video that you have all been asking for. We followed his philosophies for the last two years. The videos, we've had almost 100 million views on YouTube. There's been hundreds and hundreds of millions of views on Instagram and YouTube on Master Xie Hong Yi. And here is the question that everybody asked. Who is Master Xie Hong Yi and what is his origin story? This is exactly that. Today's video was made possible at mulligumbrewers.com where you can now get the Inspire Change t-shirts and the Rise and Grind hoodies and the last thing, the new poster has just about dropped. So if you want to get the new poster, which is the Memento Mori poster to remind you how precious life is, follow the link in the description at mulligumbrewers.com and all the profits go back into creating this content, getting our film crew out around the world. But before that, the video that everybody has asked for, what is Master Xie Hong Yi's story? What is the origin story? How did he become a master? Well, in today's video, he explains exactly that. And if you want to support Master Xie Hong Yi, head over to Shaolin.online. But before that, let's dive into the video. A lot of the questions that came through to the audience or from, from our audience were asking who you were. And we, I think we covered it initially in the first Skype call that we did. But I think people are interested to hear like where you grew up, you know, how you got into the teachings of Shaolin. Um, yeah, what, so whereabouts did you grow up? How did you eventually come on to find this path? Okay. So I was born here in Germany, also actually in this region, Kaiserslautern, where you are located right now. Um, my parents were refugees coming from Vietnam, but lived many years in a refugee camp in Laos, where in 1979 they had to, let's say, flee as the so-called boat people and eventually arrived then here in the borders of Germany. And as I also mentioned before, very, very often when it is like a Asian family, especially refugee families, the reason for them to leave the country in a way is always for that potential better future, either for themselves or for the children. So in that sense it meant my parents came here to Germany because they were at that time when they were going on the boat pregnant already with my brother, who is like four years older than me. And so that means they came to Germany in order to be able to provide us, um, let's say, a better security, a better future than they had in their home country. So having, having that said now, it automatically means that the way of being taught the education from my parents was also pretty strict in the way strict in terms of um, you do not have so much own choice in such type of Asian family of what you want in the first years. So it's very, very normal that you are listening to the wishes of your father, of your mother, and just try to make it become true. And one of these wishes is simply that you are having good grades in school, you are developing yourself in the way your parents think you should develop. And as long as you're still living inside the house of your parents, um, you don't have too many of your own ideas, strictly said. Okay. Of course, I also had, growing up in this family, time to express myself, but it was always secondary. So it was very clear to me that first of all, no matter what I'm going to do in the future, for right now, as long as my parents are alive, what they say and they wish I do, I do. 
as good as I can. And one of these things was they always wanted me to finish the school as good as I can, make that, uh, I don't know how it's called in English, that I think it's, it's the high school graduation, that first one after 13 years here in Germany. Then afterwards they wanted me to study one time, two time, and yes, so this is what I do. This is what I did. But parallel to all of this story, my father also brought me into a Shaolin Kung Fu school when I was four years old. I think his intention, okay, I don't know what his intention was, let's say like this. Nevertheless, I started with the age of four to do something and I never stopped with it. And I do think that this is the short version of where I come from. But what started like 1987 is, um, yeah, it's the training. It's the training. I went through, studied with a lot of different teachers, but my history about where I'm coming from actually is like from the field of martial arts. Yes. I mean, it's pretty much, uh, there's so much to add to it. So I really don't know at the moment where I should start. Yeah, but this is like the short version of it. I guess what would be interesting then is, because, yeah, I, I mean, that's, it sounds like a really interesting story like to hear from. So if you could give us one story for you that stands out from childhood, maybe that involves your parents or um, getting into the teachings of Shaolin, like so maybe there's a, a particular moment that stands out and we can maybe use that to sort of represent that, that more. One thing that, like now, when I look into the past, that sometimes comes up again is, I also sometimes ask, how could it be that I, let's say, ended up where I am today? Sometimes people, now nowadays, they meet me, they know me from the past, and they say, it's incredible, how come like you're, you're talking so much? Because in the past, I was not a talker. I was the one who in the break times, during school, everybody went out everywhere. They started building the groups. Everybody had his small groups. I was always like the one who was like standing, not separately, but I was always the one like observing in the past. Observing and always thinking in my mind, okay, now in a way you have 15 minutes break. What are the people talking about? And then I was like thinking already, is that something I want to spend my 15 minutes with? So a lot, a lot of time went by in the past that consisted out of listening. So the main thing that I did in the past was listening was not the talking part. It was trying to understand what is going on in the mind of the people that I'm surrounded with. And maybe this is one of the reasons that in the past I was not talking a lot, which nowadays makes me understand sometimes what's going on in the mind and why there is something that now I can relate to. And at the same time, there are many different smaller stories from my past, for example. Also, I have to say, I haven't always been so well, let's say, so well disciplined. So there was one story I can say. It was the first and the last time that I was stealing something. Yeah, I tried the best. So first of all, I said, okay, when you're going out right now and try to get something which doesn't belong to you, make it in a way that it's not obvious. So that's why I thought, okay, I need to dress in a way which is not obvious. So I dressed completely black. <laughs> okay, so 
then afterwards I actually went out and tried to get something which was not intended to be for me and there was a detective then who followed me all the way along. Now the story goes like this that after some chase through the city I eventually went into a, how you call it, it's a road with a dead end so no way to get out. So that detective who was catching me that time was also a martial artist and we actually trained in the same school in the same in the same school that time and he knew my teacher and so he made a deal with me he just said if you never do this again then I'm not gonna tell your teacher and he knew exactly why he said it because the worst thing that could have happened is that he would say something to my teacher either to my teacher or to my father because both of them were the persons that I like not wanted to disappoint. One of them like my biological father and at the second my Kung Fu master that time that I also regarded as being a father that I do not want to disappoint. Yeah, well and that was the moment that when it happened was terrible but afterwards, I think it was one of these moments, necessary and actually impactful enough that I learned my lesson that day. And yeah, so sometimes in order for you to develop something, some type of experience, some type of situations, are necessary and this is the explanation why especially in so-called monasteries or organizations that have somehow the Zen aspect or the, cha, the Chan aspect inside their teachings the methods are really hard I have to say the methods how to transmit something towards our students or to anybody else sometimes seem very very hard because the monastery is not here to make you feel well it's not like this is not Disneyland the monastery is here to give you something or to bring something out of you which afterwards will be helpful for the rest of your lifetime. It's not that you are coming here and it's our job to make you feel good. No, it can happen that you come here and what will happen is you're gonna cry because one of our teachers is gonna say something that is going to trigger exactly what is hidden inside of yourself for so many years that has not come out yet. And yes, so that means this idea of sometimes it needs something really, really emotional that triggers you inside. Then a change comes. So this is that story with, the, with, the, with my teacher and the stealing, for example. Because if I would have the attitude, it doesn't matter who you say it to, I don't care well then the story would have went a different way I would not be here today but because I cared a lot about what my father what my teachers think about me this is what made me take the decision okay that was the lesson yeah so this is also the like the understanding sometimes it's exactly what makes you cry exactly what makes you confront yourself and what is super uncomfortable. Exactly these moments sometimes are the ones you should be thankful for because they carry the potential to unlock something very, uh, very fundamental inside of you. 
Thank you so much to Master Shahangi for sharing this story with us. This is the question that everybody had asked for. And here we have it on camera with Master Shahangi, a rare insight into what his origins was, what his life was like before the temple. But we have a very special project attached to this. This was a small, small part of a documentary we, com we have coming out called Who Is Shi Heng Yi? It's coming to the channel um, very shortly. It's gonna be coming to the main channel. So if you haven't subscribed to the main channel, go subscribe and also you will be notified on this channel when that documentary comes out. It was our biggest project that we filmed with Master Shi Heng Yi. So hit the notification bell, go over to Mulligan Brothers, hit subscribe and notification bell on there and you will be notified when the project comes out. I'm very, very excited by it. It was directed by myself and my brother Luke was um, head on cinematography on it. Um, I actually lead the documentary quite a lot. William's in the documentary. It was big, it was all the brothers are involved in it. And my sister at Neve Mulligan X on Instagram, Neve, was editing the project as well. It's almost there. We're just getting the score on it and it is a very, very special project. So please, please, please keep your eyes peeled for it. That project itself was made possible with your support at mulliganbrothers.com. None of this, none of the film crew getting out around the world, none of the pre-production, all this stuff, like there's such a massive machine here that is made possible with mulliganbrothers.com and I cannot thank you guys enough. Without the support there, we wouldn't be able to do this. Everybody who bought a t-shirt, a hoodie, the new poster is coming out. Um, it's a Memento Mori poster, it tells you how long you have left every single day so you realize that time is extremely precious. Um, that is out as well. All the profits from that go back into creating these projects. So thank you so much. If you want to see what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis, it's at Jordan Mulligan Brother on Instagram, at Luke Mulligan Brother, at William Mulligan Brother, and at Neve Mulligan X as well. If you want to see what my, my brothers and sisters are getting up to. And the most important thing, go inspire some change. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.